After five conversations, I realized they didn't even understand what a bookmarklet was. I was just way too close to the problem. Hey there, everybody. I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this specific episode, I'm going to share with you how to create a prototype that quickly allows you to design product, even if you have a product in the market, and really teach you how to save five times less money on development. I've seen so many people build products and have to spend more money on software engineers, et cetera. And be sure to stay at the end because I'm gonna tell you how to get access to my customer, my top customer development questions and the eight different sections of types of questions from validation to problem discovery, et cetera, that you'll be able to use in your next customer conversations. But let's get into it. So I've been building software products for almost 25 years and clickable prototypes, prototyping is just part of the journey. If you've ever had engineers build something for you and when you finally got it back, you're like, what is that? This is the most jankiest, wrong, uh, confusing interface ever. I mean, I see this happen when a lot of my coaching clients go and hire external dev teams and or like a developer and they like just kind of like write an email and say, here's what I want it to do. That is not the way to build products. I've literally built probably hundreds of different wireframes personally. I've been involved in designing 12 plus products where like complete solutions. And you know, the way I do it even today is using clickable prototypes because I want to simulate, right? And I remember one time I was building my uh, one of my companies, Clarity.fm. So we were a marketplace to get advice over the phone. So I'm not going to get into the product, but we were designing a new feature, okay? It was this bookmarklet. So a, a bookmarklet is uh, an extension you add to the browser that lets you change the web page that you're looking at. And the crazy idea we had was, well, we had all these experts in our marketplace, right? So it was kind of like if LinkedIn had a call button, that's what clarity.fm was. We had all these experts in our marketplace, but we wanted to make them discoverable on other, on other sites. So on Twitter, when you search for, for expertise on Google, uh, on LinkedIn, we, we wanted to add a little call button if the person they were chatting with or looking at had a clarity profile. So we built this, this bookmarklet. And before we got building it, we, I, you know, our product team and, and I actually designed this one, I wireframed it in Keynote. And I'm gonna tell you all the different tools later on and, and tell you where to get those, but um, we wireframed it. And when I started showing it to customers, okay? Cause click on prototypes, if you've never done this, you can literally simulate the workflow. So somebody signs up and they click this and they go through that. And then when you're showing it to a customer, a potential customer, um, they can give you like feedback on it. And I showed it to five different customers. And after the first one, my head was like, oh no. Second one, same problem. Third, exact same problem. I was just like, but I went through it because I really think you don't, don't fix it, just go through it. After five conversations, I realized, simple thing, that the way I was describing it, everybody said the same thing. They didn't even understand what a bookmarklet was and they didn't understand why they would use it. The interface didn't communicate it. I was just way too close to the problem. And I know some of you guys do the same thing where you're designing something, you're in the forest, you have all this context and you just think it should be obvious to your customers and then you show it to them and they're like, what is this? Most of my customers at the time had no clue what the word bookmarklet was. And even if they did, I didn't even have a, 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 an image showing how it would add value to their life. So without some microcopy or an image showing how this would be better for them, there was no desire to install it. And if nobody installs it, then they're not gonna use it. And the biggest waste in software is building a feature or a product that nobody wants. And the saddest part is sometimes is they would want it if you could communicate it clear, but you're confusing them. And you paid all this money to get it built, and then you find out after the fact it doesn't work. So I wanna highly recommend you use clickable prototypes to learn like I did in that situation and save you a ton of money. So there's four key strategies that you need to understand for when you build a clickable prototype. Number one is you gotta understand the tools, okay? So there's different tools as I mentioned um, and they, they kinda go from like just wireframing to more advanced prototyping to simulation and really like playing the app for a customer. So on the low end, I like to use a tool called Balsamic, uh, Balsamic with the Q. 
I've been using it forever. Peldi, the founder, is a friend of mine. I think it's the coolest product. It's the simplest. Uh, but I also use Keynote, as I mentioned. So, I mean, on the low end, if you want something simple and easy and focused on the wireframes, Balsamic is you can't go wrong. And Keynote's another one. You can download different uh, themes and templates to let you design wire, mobile, flows, etc. And then you go up to the mid-tier. This is when you get into like a Figma or a UX pin. So, you guys can Google those. I'll, I'll link them up in the description below. But these are products that are kind of mid-range between like super high-end pixel perfect prototypes and like almost like wireframes, almost like uh, paper kind of mocked up stuff. That's the middle ground uh, where you can get some of the advanced simulation stuff. But it's again, it's not it's not 100% design because the problem is if you make it too uh, pixel perfect, then people start giving you critical feedback on colors and gradients and buttons and you know, button colors like. Or, or copy, like you wanna get feedback on the flow and the problem you're trying to solve, not necessarily on the color of the background, right? And then on the high end, you've got tools like uh, Flinto and Envision app. And these are like the, the very powerful simulation. It's almost like if you're building a building, there's kind of like sketching it out. You know, if I was building a house, I could sketch it out on a piece of printer paper. That's kind of balsamic. And then a more middle ground would be like, um, like a like a blueprint, right? That would be the middle ground. But then the highest end would be like a virtual tour of the completed thing in VR in the metaverse. That's kind of the same way to think about these three categories of tools. But for most people watching this, if you're interested on how to do this properly, just start with Balsamic. It's the one that's gonna get you going. Number two, outline outcomes. So a lot of us that have never built product before don't understand that there's a whole methodology behind product design. Okay, so if you want to go down the the path of um, you know design thinking and um, you know don't make me think is one of my favorite books on this, but there's a Sprint. Uh, I forget the guy's name from Google, but if you want to search that one, there's all these different like design principles of how to solve problems. But the one I like the best is goal driven design, and the reason why it's important if you're going to prototype is every flow should be designed for one specific outcome. What happens often is when you're building a product and you're new to this, you just wanna dump everything on the same interface. You know, you, you create almost like a dashboard and it's got all the, it can do this, it can do this, it can do this. And you, you don't really design it, you know, from a completed uh, specific outcome point of view. You don't say like, okay, this person wants to add a user. Well, what does that look like? Somebody wants to send money to somebody else. What would that look like? And if you want to like really get good at prototyping, yes, you need to understand the tool, but you also got to learn how to design using a goal-driven methodology. Okay, so that that process is of understanding what's the one need the customer has at that point, the user, and helping them get to an endpoint and a result. That is that is the thing you're going to have to learn if you want to be good at this. Anybody can draw squares, circles, triangles, forms, whatever, but if you actually want to get good at prototyping product, you need to study goal-driven design. Number three, sketch inputs, okay? So what sketch inputs means is that you, like a lot of people, like I mentioned, you, you just design the dashboard and you don't design the forms for the inputs of the data, right? It's really easy to fund to like show a report and here's, oh, look at this, like this is what the product could do. But none of the output and the reports happen without the input, without, showing the screen that connects their their data systems or financial systems their email marketing tools like if you're building an e email marketing tool like what's the why, what's the flow for somebody to create a campaign right like that matters a lot more than here's your campaign dashboard and most people create uh, dashboards without in, in a format it's called a, no it's a blank slate there's no initiation like if somebody comes into your product for the first time and they have nothing created what does it say? What does it show? How does it guide the person through a process of being successful using your solution? So like to me, the blank slates design, the data entry design, those are the inputs that you need to wireframe and sketch those out and really ask yourself like, do I need to ask the customer this information at this step or can I put it later? Can I grab it from somewhere else? Can I have them just connect to another tool that probably has this data and can I suck the data in? Anything that you can do to remove the friction of completing a task for your customer, that's where you wanna actually spend your time and energy designing, not just creating the output and saying, oh, look how cool this is, we're gonna make it do this. That'll get you sales, but it won't get you retention. And 
You know, you can pre-sell a lot of people with a, a prototype, but you won't get the retention if you don't think through how it works. The implementation details matter. Number four, check reality. This is, as I mentioned, like, I love talking to customers. I love showing them cool new stuff. It's like, you know, I get myself in trouble all the time with my teams because I'll get on a call and I'll be like, oh, check this new thing out. It literally just happened. To me. Like, I had a, uh, one of my product teams, I got them all to buy uh, Oculus VR headsets. And then, you know, everybody else, why are we buying Oculus headsets for the team? Blah, 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 blah. Look, it's, you know, like you, you want to innovate, you want to push things forward and you want to show your customers. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm excited. So like my product team, I wanted to show them what's possible. I, I even got a few from my real customers and I showed them. But the problem is, is that if you, again, you guys can do your release cycles the way you want to. I just get excited that I want to show them early, but this is where getting a customer advisory board really works. So a customer advisory board is essentially at least a dozen people that you feel best represents your ideal customer profile, right? These are not your first customers. These are not people that are the loudest. These are the people that you feel represent your ICP, your ideal customer profile. And you invite them to join this board. And what you commit to them is, hey, we're gonna show you early stuff. We're gonna get your feedback and we're gonna co-create the product together, right? So as long as you have that group and you set the intentions, you won't run into the problem I have where uh, one customer tells one of my customer success managers like, I heard you guys are building this. And they're like, what are you talking about? Because nobody told them because it's not ready yet because I'm still iterating. So you need to set this like, super like exclusive and like don't disclose anything to anybody else that I show you in these meetings because it's su I don't know if I'm going to build it right but that's to me is how we check reality we bring the prototypes to those meetings and in those meetings you unpack what you're building and you listen and and this is one of the entrepreneurial traits that I think is lacking right now is I'm looking for what assumption is that I got wrong I'm not looking to sell the idea. I'm looking to say, here's an assumption I have. Is that true? Here's another assumption I have. Is that true? My assumption is, is that you understand what to write for the headline of this landing page. Cause if you don't, then you're not going to complete the landing page builder. Right. And it's all these little things that we just take for granted that you, a great product manager can kind of rewrite those questions to learn and they check the reality with real customers, especially the ideal ones that you actually wanna build your business off of, the one that will pay quickly and pay the most. Find those people, put them into a group, and check your product prototypes with them. So quick recap, the four key strategies for building great clickable prototypes. Number one, choose the right tool. I recommend Balsamic to start. Number two, outline outcomes using goal-driven design. Number three, sketch the inputs. Make sure you don't drop them on a blank slate dashboard. And number four, check reality. Build your customer advisory board. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I wanna share with you an exclusive resource called the Top Customer Development Questions. There are eight different sections for product validation, problem discovery, uh, product uh, uh, reviews, etc. These are the exact questions that I use when I have these meetings. So if you want a copy, click the link below to download your copy. It goes through the exact words you want to use to ask the questions and the follow-up questions. A lot of you guys don't understand how to actually extract and pull the learnings that you need to from your customers to build the right product. Click the link below to download your copy. And if you like this, please click the like button, subscribe to this channel, and let me know in the comments what you like best, what was the most meaningful for you. And as per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday.